How's it going, everybody? So, today, <clears throat> well, I have quite the good issue. It's a good issue to have uh, on my hands. So, we do have this 40 gallon. It's reading zero ammonia now. And uh, it's got two 75 gallon filters on it. There are biofilters built into the hillside uh, in lava rock with uh, already cycled filter material. But, because of a very kind club member, we have a whole boatload of catfish here. So we've got these uh, albino um, Aeneas uh, corridors, and then we also have these wild-caught salt and pepper hebrosis corridors. Uh, and then we have some, uh, I think they're called, uh, Swordzy, Swordzy, uh, Corridoras. And they're the striped ones there with the black line around their, <coughs> their, their eye, kind of. So it looks like we've got, uh, oh, and there's another kind in here. I didn't even see that. It looks like maybe they look similar to the panda ones, but... Not quite. We'll have to. I'll have to check out what they are. He basically just gave me all his corridors. Oh, and there's some Sturby corridors. Rad. I'm really stoked to see that. So, um, I'm gonna need to untangle all these corridors into some buckets. But then I'll be putting them in different tanks in my rack system. Uh, and basically, I know I have too many. I'm gonna have to sell some. But I will probably have a, a herd, so to speak, of about a dozen in here, in this tank, and I'm thinking the albinos are a good candidate, because still, a lot of them are small, and uh, they're easy to spot, they liven up the tank, and they should move together a little bit more. Also, these little Hebrosis Corridoras, which are also awesome. I love these guys. I've bred them before. I love them. Uh, it looks like we've got two here, three, four, five, and then what's in the final bag of, of Corys, that is. Uh, and look at these old ones. This guy is six and a half years old. So this is thanks to Jay and Carol... Um, in the GSAS, uh, club here in, uh, the Seattle area. So we've got some really old quarries. I told them I'd give them a happy home. They've been the ones who breed, uh, all the little other ones that are in here. Let's see, what else do we have in here? I, you know, this is the first looking at them, really, um, because he handed them to me all in bags. And I don't like that they're in the corner of the bags like this. They get kind of bunched up. But they are in huge bags. They've got little cubes in there. Oh no, we got a dead one. I think that one was long dead, actually. Because he scooped everything out of a bucket where they had been waiting. Uh, but it looks like there are... I can't tell for sure if those are stirbys, but they sure look like them. And some pandacories. Now, the the this couple that raises these fish, uh, you may know them for raising shellies, for raising um, lots of apistos and other rare fish that you can't find other places. Well known on Aquabid, Jay is a stand-up guy. He is the one who hooked me up with the green dragons, uh, these ginormous green dragons. Uh, and now he's hooked me up with two sets of green dragons with the longest fancy tails I think I've ever seen. Um, and I am going to have to take a look at them real quick and make sure that they're, they're pairs. I see the Onodontids on uh, this guy, but I don't think I see them on the other ones, so... It looks like we might be, they may not be pairs in the, in, the, in, in the sense I thought that they were. But there's definitely one male. I've got to be careful with those onodontids so we don't break off those whiskers, those barbels. Because look at that, they have branches. Some of them have three or four branches. 
So I might rethink which tank they go into. There's already enough catfish in here with the... Uh, he thinks he's hiding, uh, with the catfish that all think they're hiding, plus the Julii Corridors in here. This tank gets cleaned a lot, because catfish are kind of inherently dirty. Up here, we've got guppies right now, and some danyas that I'm waiting to lay eggs. It looks like they're skinnier, they may have laid their eggs up in there, which is good. I'm gonna take this contraption out, uh, do some water changes. Over here, we have our, um our uh oh geez pseudomagill marginata um aru twos and their spawning mop they're gonna remain in their side but i'm debating uh i think quarries will probably end up in here i'm debating where the other if i'll keep all these long fins together maybe maybe in here i think that might be the plan and to uh for now and then get rid of um a couple of them maybe two of them once i i see who's paired up give them some breeding spots so on and so forth let's go upstairs because this is not all so he is moving he and his wife are moving and they were not able to take these fish with them and i'm a sucker for saying <clears throat> you know oh i'll take in some fish you know i'll, I'll give them a good home uh, and I will either provide them a good home or um, or give them to someone else who can. Uh, in this tank up here, we've got, right now, we've got pretty busy with fry. But though these guys will all be moving down to that top tank downstairs very soon. And two more of these big uh, guys will be coming out. But these are really beautiful... These are uh, from Guiana, and they are pencil fish. So uh, it looks like we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 13 probably. Um, yeah, 13 is what I counted twice now. So 13 pencil fish. They've got a nice red color with then some kind of yellows and stuff like that in the in the fins below. Uh, out of South America, these are dwarf pencils. Um, obviously, the ammonia is fine in the bag right now and everything. Uh, this tank, as I said, is a little crowded, but there's no one taking up the lower areas uh, space-wise, so I think that'll be okay. Now, the biggest trouble that I'm going to have is these guys so i didn't ask for these guys but i was given these guys and these guys these guys right here are pea puffers <clears throat> now i'm curious if it's a bloodbath if i let them out it probably would be and i think that would be irresponsible so they're probably gonna have to go into a new tank and I'm probably gonna have to move something else outside uh, that or I can put them in a quarantine section of a tank um, before I've taken these uh, jugs and I've cut a couple of them and connected them uh, for them which you know it works but I feel always feel guilty doing that uh, even if it's got good aeration and water flow um, but yeah, so we're going to see. I'm going to try one puffer. He had them in community tanks. And they were born in community tanks, big tanks. And there they live. Now these are mostly South American fish. Other than the Papua New Guineans here. Papuans. Uh, but other than that, they're South American fish. And these are, uh, I believe... I believe they're African pea puffers. I might get yelled at you guys if I'm if I'm wrong on that, but that's what I was assuming. But this tank does not have any shrimp. Does have a lot of uh, snails that appear randomly. So I think we're gonna give it a shot and try putting a couple of them, like maybe one or two, in, in first, and just see what happens. Um, which is maybe irresponsible, but we'll see what happens, and then if that's total mistake, which I think it's gonna be, I'll fish them out, 
and put them back into uh, some fry nets for a sec, and then I'll, I'll rig up a contraption. Also, it's warm enough outside that I can easily move any of my Danios over in that tank, which is all Danios and Endlers. Any of the Danios and Endlers can easily go outside right now. This tank is stocked just about the way I want it. Um, the... Yeah, I think it's stocked the way I want it. The other thing I was thinking about doing is putting one of those plecos uh, downstairs in the big tank downstairs because there's lots of manzanita wood for it to rasp on, and uh, it's a low-tech style tank. And so I think I think that's going to be the future that that is waiting for them. So I guess I'm going to get some buckets and I'm going to separate things by species and by size and by which tank they're going into. First by species for the catfish. Then I'll figure out which species are going where. And uh, from there uh, I can do an update video. And I think I'm going to do that in the form of a live stream. So uh, I may be calling on some of you guys on the channel. Uh, you know, Chase, Bentley, uh, Alyssa... Whoever you are that lives locally, that uh, Eric, who watches the channel and uh, and may be interested, you guys might be getting a phone call about, uh, can you guys take some catfish off my hands? Because I was under the influence, I was getting maybe a dozen or 20 total, and it turns out that it's like, you know, a lot. It's It's like 40, so... Uh, I, I would, if it were me alone, I would just buy another tank, put a bunch of stuff outside right now. Uh, I was actually offered an 80 gallon tank for free yesterday, um, with filter pump everything. And I turned it down because of my wife, because I want to respect not taking over the house. But I think, yeah, what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to take some of these, uh, I'll, I'll, we'll take one of these pairs um, and I can't tell if that is going to be a male that's just younger still, but you can see already in these bags, just a side note, of how friggin' dirty, uh, catfish slash incestrous are. They are dirty, dirty fish. <laughs> they are, they make a mess. So, uh, let's scoot this over, scoot another bag in just them to that but there you go you can kind of see in their mess uh what's going on but i think well that might be a young male there actually there are some onodontodes i hope i'm saying that word right um all of this is real stressful obviously it's going from the place where they've been since they were born on i think it's a well on a different system into a new newer tank that's this tank here is going to be a little rough. At least there's a lot of wood for them and a lot of loose bark and, and roughage for them. And there's rocks for them to hide under and things like that, logs for them to hide under. But um, I'm sure they'll tear the heck out of my, uh, my display. So, um, yeah, we're going to get to it. It looks like he put about 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9... Nine quarries in each bag, and there's one, two, three, four, five bags. So, yeah, there's probably 45 or 40 quarries here. So, if you guys need quarries and you're in the Seattle area, hit me up because I might be uh, in the market to move some of them. The other thing that I was going to update you on, um, I actually meet with my surgeon tomorrow, and so I'm kind of getting things in order, but I have... Uh, panda loaches and i love them they're in my uh blue dream shrimp tank look at that they go right by the newborn shrimp and those are newborn shrimp like really teeny shrimp and they don't seem to be able to eat those even i mean maybe day old ones like if they were waiting by the mom to eat <laughs> maybe but um at first, I was like, well, I could put the pea puffer in here and try to move all the blue shrimp out, but uh, no, I'm not going to do that to them. That's just mean. Uh, but there are a total of six panda loaches now. Did some trading for them. 
And then also there are Aru 2 Fry in here. So that would be the other problem. Uh, there are Aru 2 Fry in here. And then Pseudo Reticulatus Fry over in here. So uh, you can see them darting around too. So... All right, guys. Well, I will keep you updated. We'll do a live stream either this afternoon or tomorrow or something like that. And we'll figure out what the game plan is. So I'll talk to you guys later. Take it easy. Swim on.